In this third video lecture, we will learn about measures of central tendency, including mean, median, mode, variance, skew, and kurtosis. The mean, abbreviated capital M italicized, is the average value for a set of scores. This is very important to statistics because average variance from the mean is what comprises standard deviation and standard deviation is used to compare a person's score with the overall distribution of a sample score. This helps us to understand the meaning of a person's score in the context of the sample. Note that the mean is susceptible to outliers, particularly with small samples. You can see in the scatter plot below, there is one score that is quite markedly different from the other scores and in a small sample this would dramatically impact the mean. Here's an example for how we compute the mean so you understand how this would affect the mean and outlier. Let's say we have scores of 3, 5, 5, 6, 7 and 10. To compute the mean you would add all of those together and divide by the number of scores. So 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 plus 6 is 19, 19 plus 7 is 26, and 26 plus 10 is 36. So that's our total just by adding up all of those numbers. We then divide by the number of numbers, if you will, the frequency of numbers. So we have six uh, total values there. So 36 divided by 6 equals 6. So 6 is our mean. Now let's say we had instead of 10 at the end, we had 30 at the end. We would have, adding up all the other numbers, 26 plus 30, which would give us 56. Now when you divide 56 by 6, the number is dramatically larger. It is above 9. So you can see here that when we alter the, uh, the, the numbers so that we have one outlier, it dramatically can impact the mean, particularly with a small sample size. The median, sometimes delineated or abbreviated as MDN, is the middle value for a set of scores. This is commonly used for income tracking, median income for example, though has less application for statistics in the social sciences because it cannot tell us how a set of scores is distributed and therefore it's hard to know what a person's score means compared to others. So let's go back to our example of 3, 5, 5, 6, 7 and 10. The median number here is 5.5 because we look just for the middle number. You'll notice that we have three numbers either side of between 5 and 6. So you have 3, 5 and 5. There are three numbers there. 6, 7, and 10, there are three numbers there. There isn't a middle number between those. There isn't an odd number, if you will. We have an even number. So whenever you have an even number with median, you just take the middle between the two, uh, the, the, the two numbers, the third and the fourth number there, which is 5.5. That is our median. The mode is the most frequently occurring value for a set of scores. Again, this has less application for statistics because it, because it cannot tell us how a set of scores are distributed. Here's the example of how you compute mode. 3, 5, 5, 6, 7, and 10 was our data set. The mode here is 5 because that occurs twice as a number, whereas none of the other numbers occur more than once. This would be a unimodal distribution because there is only one mode. There are also bimodal and multimodal distributions, which is when you have multiple numbers occurring at the same frequency. So let's say we had two sevens in addition to two fives, we would have a bimodal distribution. Or if we had two fives, two sevens, and two tens, we would have a multimodal distribution because we would have three numbers occurring at the same frequency. The range is the difference between the smallest and largest value for a set of scores. This is helpful sometimes, though does not help us understand again how scores fall within a distribution. 
going back to our example of 3, 5, 5, 6, 7, and 10, the range is 3, that's the lowest number, to 10, the highest number. And therefore, if you subtract 10 by 3, you get 7. That's our range. Variance is very important to understand how a sample is distributed. This looks at the distance from the mean for each score. So let's kind of give you an example of what variance means. 3, 5, 5, 6, 7, and 10 is our example. Here we are looking for the distance from the mean for each of these, the variance from the mean. Remember our mean is 6. So 3, 3 is 6 away from, sorry, 3 is 3 away from 6. 6 minus 3 is minus 3. 5 is 1 away from the mean, it's minus 1 difference. Five, the other 5 is also minus 1 difference. 6 is the same as the mean, 6. 7 is 1 above the mean, plus 1. And 10 is 4 above the mean of 6, plus 4. Now that you have those values, you square each of them. So minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. 0 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 times plus 1 is 1. And plus 4 times plus 4 is 16. Once you've added those together, you get 28. You then divide 28 by the number of numbers, the, the frequency of numbers. We had six numbers in the data set. Minus 1, so 6 minus 1. The reason you add a minus 1 is that we are going to assume this is a sample rather than a population. And again, if you recall from samples and populations, whenever you have a sample, it is not ever completely representative of a population. And so that minus 1 is used to uh, interject some uh, uh, assumption that, that they, the data set is not going to be completely the same as the population. And because we always subtract minus 1, larger s size of the sample is going to be less affected by the minus 1 and therefore closer to what the actual population number is. So larger sample size is always better in statistics. 28 divided by a 5, 6 minus 1, gives us 5.6. This is the variance for the sample. That 5.6 doesn't mean much by itself because you still cannot compare a score with a set of scores and understand what it means. 5.6 doesn't really tell us much. To do this, we need standard deviation. Standard deviation is the average amount of variance from the mean. This is given a number, for example, plus one standard deviation is one serving or dose of average variance from the mean, so that the distribution of scores can be compared between samples and with the population. So if we square root 5.6, this gives us 2.37. That is our standard deviation. Standard deviation is fairly easy to compute once you have variance. Now we want to understand what it means to have a score that is two standard deviations above the mean and two standard deviations below the mean. If you want to know below the mean, you take the mean, which is 6, and you minus it two standard deviations from that, 2.37 minus 2.37. That gives us 1.26, a fairly low number. So if a person scored two standard deviations below the mean, they would need 1.26 to do so. If a person scored two standard deviations above the mean, we would add 2.37 twice to 6, and that gives us 10.74. Now, you may be wondering why two standard deviations, why not one? The graphic next will help us to understand why this is important. The normal curve, also called the normal distribution, looks at how scores fall uh, when they are when they follow what's called the bell curve and you'll notice here if you look at the percentages that one standard deviation above and below the mean 68 percent of people will fall one standard deviation above and below the mean whereas two standard deviations outside the mean 
95% of people are going to fall minus 2 to plus 2 standard deviations above and below the mean. This is very helpful for statistics because we can start to identify people who are what you may, might call outliers, uh, scores that we would not particularly expect based on chance alone. We'll talk more about probability and chance in a subsequent session. Three standard deviations above and below the mean is 99.7, meaning 99.7 .7 people are going to score within minus 3 to plus 3 standard deviations. So if you have someone who scores more than 3 standard deviations away from the mean, or more or greater than 3 standard deviations above the mean, they have a very unusual uh, score. And this is very, very useful for us, for example, with IQ scores because we can figure out what a score means relative to others in the population. Therefore, if you have, for example, an IQ of 130, we know that 95% of people in the population are not going to achieve that score. So it tells us that, that is a fairly rare score, and we can start to make some inferences based on that. So, standard deviation and mean are the key to statistics in the social sciences, because that is how we compare a person's score with a sample, and in addition to that, we can also compare groups between each other to look at whether differences are significant, meaning they are unlikely to happen by chance alone. More on this in a subsequent session. I love this, just uh, a little bit of levity for you here. Okay, if you want more examples for how to compute things like standard deviation, there is an excellent example on the Maths is Fun website, which looks at a sample of dogs and gives you the difference in height between dogs for standard deviation. So if you're interested in that, you can go to that site and uh, learn more about standard deviation that way. We now want to talk about distribution. Now that we know about mean and standard deviation, we want to know how they affect the shape of the curve and they do so dramatically. They don't just affect the curve, they define it. The mean is always the center point of the curve. Standard deviation is how flat or steep the curve is. When you have a very large or high standard deviation, you tend to have a fairly flat curve because the mean variance from, uh, the average variance from the mean is significantly large and therefore you don't have a very pointy curve, you have quite a flat curve, just because most scores are not clustered around the mean, they're, they're going to be dispersed widely. Whereas a small standard deviation is usually a steep curve, because you have uh, less variance from the mean, most scores cluster around the mean. Distributions can also be skewed positively or negatively, or victims of ketosis, there should be a metal band name, known as platykurtic or leptokurtic distributions. Again, this has to do with the shape of the curve based on standard deviation. Let's look at skew first, then ketosis. Negatively skewed, normal and positively skewed distributions are important for you to know about, and they won't make um, uh, logical, rational sense, because they're the opposite way than you might expect. A negatively skewed distribution tends to have scores that cluster towards the right side of the distribution, so for example, higher scores. And here you'll find that the mode is greater than the median and greater than the mean. So you would expect a negatively skewed um, distribution based on, for example, graduate students taking a test in a statistics class. You would expect most students to be scoring high in the A range, the B range, and very, very few students receiving Ds and Es and Fs. Normal, or no skew, is when you have mean, median, and mode all in the same, uh, the, all about the same value, and this is when the normal curve uh, occurs. The normal curve represents a perfectly symmetrical distribution and there is no difference between mode, median, and mean. Positively skewed is when the scores are um, uh, skewed the other way than negatively skewed. The scores tend to cluster around the lower side um, 
of the uh, uh, of the mean. So you have the mean and then the mode and the median are actually less than the mean instead of more than the mean. What that means is let's say you um, are gathering data about the frequency of depressive symptoms among the general population. You would expect most people to have very few depressive symptoms uh, with some people having more depressive symptoms but, but much fewer people having more depressive symptoms and therefore most people are going to cluster towards the lower end of the graph and fewer people towards the higher end of the graph, the right side of the graph. This would be called a positively skewed distribution. Kurtosis is a kind of a return to what we were talking about earlier when we have a flat curve versus a pointy curve. Mesokurtic is considered a normal curve. Leptokurtic is the pointy curve and platykurtic is the flat curve. And these uh, phenomena occur when the standard deviation is either very small, that's leptokurtic, there isn't a lot of variance from the mean, or when the standard deviation is rather large, and that's when you have a large amount of standard deviation from the mean, the scores are widely dispersed, and you don't seem to have any kind of point, if you will, not, not a, there isn't a pointy shape to the curve. That's because of just the wide distribution. We want to have, ideally, there to be no skew and no ketosis, so to have mesokurtic distribution with no skew, because that represents the normal curve or n normal distribution. And the normal distribution, as we'll find out in the subsequent session, is the way in which we can compare a sample score with a population score, because there is an assumption that most populations follow the normal distribution. I'm kind of ahead of myself here. So why does distribution matter? It is theorized that all population parameters fit the normal curve. Depression, happiness, intelligence, resilience, lifestyle behaviors, that there is a normal curve that each of those follow. This has important implications for the ability to generalize research findings from a sample to a population. So instead of saying that it appears that this sample of people with depression um, respond this way to this treatment, we can say that all people with depression will respond this way to this treatment because the sample follows the normal curve and so does the population, so we can make that inference, that jump. That's how statistics works. So today we learned about measures of central tendency including mean, median, mode, variance, skew, and ketosis. This concludes this video lecture.